times. Well, hello, it's Saturday night. Welcome to the Jonathan Ross Show. Let's start, as we always do, by having a look in the green room and seeing who's on the programme tonight. My first guest kept us all guessing in Homeland, and now he's the king of all he surveys in the excellent Wolf Hall. It is Henry VIII himself, Damien Lewis, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the fabulous Damien Lewis. My next guest is fresh from triumphing at the Brits, where she deservedly picked up the award for best female solo artist. I love her, I'm sure you do too. It's Paloma Faith. <laughs> Hello, Paloma. I love that look. <laughs> also here, one of the most popular stand-ups on TV and one of the stars of Channel 4's The Last Leg, it's the very funny Mr. Josh Widdicombe. Yeah! Hello, Josh. Hello, young Josh. And we have not just a music superstar, but a definitive style icon. He is the coolest man in pop. It is the one and only Brian Ferry. There he is. Oh. And Brian, we're not going to be chatting here. We're performing live at the end of the show, too. The one and only Brian Ferry. <laughs> Let me move on to some yoga. I think you're going to like this, because we've all been talking about this. The thing with the dress on the internet. Have you all looked at that? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. That sensation, the simple dress calls a sensation on the internet this week. Its colour has divided people into the two distinct camps. You either see the dress as blue and black or as gold and white. Here it is. Let's start the argument. So there's the dress. How many people are seeing that as gold and white? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm guessing the rest of you are either just not interested or you're seeing it as black. Are you seeing it as black and blue, the rest of you? Yes. You're weird. <laughs> It's so weird. And apparently it's to do with the way the brain filters messages from your eyes uh, and the way different levels of light reflect with colours and then your eyes interpret them in different ways. And to prove it, we thought we'd try and experiment. We're going to change the lighting here in the studio. So you can see this evening I've deliberately worn a blue suit. This is a blue suit, no matter what you might think. <laughs> and I've got a, a tie with a lot of blue and some white in it as well, white shirt there. So you can see I'm wearing, essentially, it's blue, black and white. Now, when I turn to the camera over here, you'll see that uh, when we change the lighting, it's totally different. So I'm going to turn to the camera now. <laughs> but then back on that camera, and you see, so that's really, this is, this is black and blue, and that was white and gold, wasn't it? Did you see that as white and gold? <laughs> I've never felt so relaxed. <laughs> Let's get my first guest out. He's one of my favourite actors with standout performances in shows like Band of Brothers, of course, Homeland, and now the fantastic Wallfall. Please welcome Mr. Damien Lewis. <laughs> Have you ever, obviously there was a bit of trickery involved there, yeah. have you ever worn the full lady regalia? Have you ever worn the high heels and done the dress and everything? I'm not here to discuss my personal life okay. with you, Jonathan. <laughs> Uh, I have actually, for the first play I ever did at Royal Shakespeare Company. Oh, really? Yes, and I was, I was in four inch heels and, um, and a big wig and a corset and... <sighs> and did you, did you enjoy, did you like the way in the game? Yes, yes, I did, mm. quite a lot. It, it is, but those shoes, I don't know how people can hobble around those shoes. You should eh? see Paloma's shoes. Uh, so, <laughs> it's great to have you here. And, uh, you know, now, I love the fact that you are so well-known all over the world. Are you someone who enjoys fame? Because Homeland really put you on the map, didn't it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I suppose, uh, yeah, Band of Brothers, I suppose, got me sort of going, but, yeah, the sort of attention in the street, if you like, became yeah. a bit more aggressive, a bit more, you know, just right all over you and, um... Uh, people grabbing your arm and going, oh my god, OMG, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> Jay Z, didn't Jay Z is a fan of it. He put uh, Brody, the character you played yeah, in Yeah, he Homeland, referenced into one Brody in, uh, in, one of his, um, in one of his songs. Yeah. Which was, um, I don't know, if you want to arrive anywhere, that's where you want to arrive, isn't that's it? In a Jay Z isn't it? song. Have you spoken to Mr. Z about this uh, reference? No, well, it's Jay now between us two, wow. but. Uh, <laughs> uh, no. No, I haven't. Well, you've got to... We, we, I think I'd be, I'd be, I'd be too scared to. Yeah. How did you manage to avoid giving out spoilers for Homeland? Because obviously the, it was a great series and it was edge of the seat stuff, but you needed to not know what was coming next, I think, to fully enjoy it. And if you haven't watched it yet, we're going to talk about stuff near the end now. But you, you managed to keep it quiet for most people, but I know there was an incident... Was it with Jennifer Lawrence where she oh, didn't know Oh, the lovely Jennifer... Who loves Jennifer Lawrence in here? Yeah. <laughs> see it was great, a terrific, wonderful actor. But we found ourselves next to each other on the red carpet in uh, LA, LA recently. LA, in LA. LA, <laughs> yeah. 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 
We were on the red carpet and we were being interviewed uh, independently and uh, she just suddenly went, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And I love That's your... That's the worst oh, Jennifer uh, Lawrence <laughs> person I've ever done. And she said, I love your show, et cetera, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. It's Brody. Oh, wow. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And um, then the woman who was interviewing me turned around and said, have you seen it? And Jennifer went, oh, I love it, I love it. And said, was... And block your ears, anyone who wants to yeah. watch it now. This, this is the point. time to block your ears. Were you devastated at the end when he was... And she went, what? <laughs> and the woman just crumpled. She knew immediately. She went, oh, my God, you haven't seen it. Oh, my God. <laughs> and this is on you film. Haven't seen it. Yeah, it was all on film. Well, we, can, we, we can show you. This is the moment when uh, Jennifer Lawrence had her life her and Brody dream. ruined. Yeah. <laughs> You've never met him before? That is Brody. I've never met Brody before. Oh my, I can't look. Okay, Don't you want to meet him now? Okay. No, no, no. Be cool. Okay. No, no, okay. Be cool. Don't... Stop looking. Stop it. Stop doing that. Stop, stop, stop. Stop it. Seriously, I'm not good. I'm not good. No, 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 no stop it! It's like, it's great. She wants to be She wants to be joke. Oh, 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 They killed him off. What? They yes. killed him off. They killed him off. The show. Don't tell us you did just oh. a spoiler. Oh my gosh. No, they haven't. No, sh they really have. These well, two are crazy. I can't process this right now, and I can't. There's no. cameras, and I have to. These two are crazy. They're, they've been doing this oh, all day, yeah. everybody. I can't believe you said that. That's a, that's a, that's a, what a horrible way to be told. Man. But I love the fact that you did it, because whenever I've given that spoiler, you always then try and fake. I go, no, no, I'm just joking. And it's, <laughs> you never can convince anyone. I know. Did yeah. you speak to her afterwards about that? Did you? Uh, no, no, I didn't. Uh, I looked for her all night, obviously. <laughs> but, but no, I didn't. OK, now here's the exciting news. If you're a fan of Damien, he's just about to hit the stage in American Buffalo. A brilliant play by David Mamet. It's at the Wyndham Theatre. And a great cast along with you on this. Well, yeah, as you can see, lovely Tom Sturridge, who's a brilliant young brilliant actor. Young. I can plug his film. He's got Far From the Madding Crowd coming out. Um, and John Goodman, of course, who, legend, legend. Yeah. So um, we're very excited. And that will start in uh, start rehearsing in two weeks. And, um, yeah, great, great story about three men, three small-time crooks who tried to commit a heist, um, steal a batch of uh, precious coins, and it all goes terribly, terribly wrong. It's really about three men in a cave unable to do anything that they set out to do. It's but quite it, sad. The great thing in a but it's very play, funny as well. And the dialogue is fast and funny as well. And so you haven't actually funny. started rehearsing yet. You're going to sit down with these guys in a couple of weeks. We're going to sit down and... Uh, yeah, I haven't met John Goodman yet. The, uh, uh, and uh, Tom I know a little bit, but I uh, thought I might take him for a few, few beers in a local public house. So is that the bonding process? You go up. out and get a little bit drunk with people? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and congratulations on Wolf Hall. What an incredible achievement uh, that has been. And yeah, that must you. have been... What a, what a great part to get, to play Henry VIII. What a great role. Yeah, it's a fantastic role. And um, Hilary Mantel's books are a work of great imagination and inventiveness. And you get a little peek behind the closed doors of these very well-known characters. And that, that's, of course, why it's been such a success, her reimagined world uh, that these characters inhabit. Um, and Henry... Yeah, Henry is, is, is boyish and charismatic and charming and um, uh, homicidal maniac. Uh, but here's the weird thing, because that, you don't look like or indeed act like the Henry we've kind of grown up with. You know, I mean, if you look at that, what's that old picture we've got? This is the kind of traditional view we have of Henry VIII, I think, looking much kind of stockier and bored. And I guess this is late period Henry, yeah. and we imagine him with, like, a side of mutton or something, and, you know, that's the Henry we think of, not a young athletic one, but I assume, of course, he was once. This, this is, these are the Holbein paintings, Holbein paintings, but he... he um, Henry was the preeminent sportsman uh, of his time. He was a great falconer, archer, hunter, jouster. Um, his meals were seven course meals. Wow. And he loved nothing more than just riding out on his horses. He used to travel for three or four months to his different castles through the summer months. So he was paranoid about getting plague or the sweats or even a minor cold, as far as I can work out. But he, um, uh, he's, yeah, he was a sort of preeminent sportsman. And he then had this uh, accident where a horse rolled on him. And he was concussed, actually, for two hours. And he couldn't joust or hunt anymore. And from that moment on, that's when he became like that, and he just ballooned. He was sort of like a Tudor he just Elvis. That yeah. Roman <laughs> eight. Yeah. Well, look, should we have a look at... OK, would you like... How many of you saw Wolf Hall, by the way? <laughs> yeah. 
packed more than I thought. So, uh, <laughs> it's great, though. Get on DVD. Uh, this is a clip of Damien as Henry, and I think it's a really powerful performance, so congratulations. Thank you. It's a really wonderful piece of work. Have a look at this. Oh, come on. What's keeping her? You know the Queen's are never on time for anything. This is the last time she keep me waiting, I promise you. This <laughs> is and this is late for her own funeral. <laughs> <laughs> There you go, Daniel Lewis is from Henry VIII. Yeah, that's, no that's, a, that's a different take on it. No, that was the one thing. Here, here he is in Wolf Hall. Enjoy this. This is good. <laughs> what would a man like you know about the honour of princes? You told him you have the king in your pocket. Don't deny it. You would train me up like one of your boys. Have me touch my cap when you come down in the morning and say, How do you, sir? But I really believe you think you are the king and I am the blacksmith's boy. Don't you? Don't you? God preserve your majesty. And now, will you excuse me? That's a great scene right there. That's Wolf Hall. That's out on DVD now. And if you do bump into Jennifer Lawrence, don't tell her what happens to Anne Boleyn, because she hasn't seen any yet. <laughs> so, no spoilers. <laughs> what about your sons? Because I guess they're... How old are your, your boys now? I've got a girl and a boy oh, there, eight, eight and seven. Eight and seven? Eight and seven. OK, so presumably they haven't Go seen on. a lot of your work. I mean, they can't watch that, they can't no, watch home. No, it's not age-appropriate, uh, a lot of the work uh, that I do, unfortunately. So what did they think? I mean, they must have known you were acting, but well, they, they haven't we, seen They, you they do don't it. know what acting means. You tell a seven-year-old or a five-year-old you were actors, and it's a, you know, they're as likely to say, aren't we all? You know, <laughs> and, and what, does, what does that mean? So we, we would always tell them we were... Well, we still tell them we're storytellers, and we get... We get paid to tell stories for people and, and they seem to understand that but uh, going on the school run actually uh, during the height of Homeland there was this one, one wall, one billboard, there was an enormous poster of, of Homeland with me on it and every time we'd get stuck in traffic right by this poster <laughs> and I didn't want it to be too overwhelming for the children, I thought it would be confusing for them, they were five and six at the time and I was always pointing at things out the other windows going, oh look at that there and they'd all go, oh yes daddy what's that? <laughs> and then one day my son he was about five at the time, turned and he did a better double take than Sid James could have done <laughs> and went, Dad, there's a huge picture of you on the wall <laughs> <laughs> confused by the whole thing and, um, and that's when we just had to break it to him. That's, that's what mummy and daddy are up to. Are you going to stay with us out, Damien? Yes, absolutely. You've got so much stuff going on and American Buffalo is at the Wyndham Theatre from the 16th of April. It's a great play. I know it's going to be great with that cast in it. Damien Lewis, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, still to come on the show, along with Damien, we have Paloma Faith, Chris Whittacombe and music and chat from Brian Ferry, so don't go away. She's still here, I'm going to get my next guest right at her. She has it all, a fabulous voice, a unique style, platinum and selling albums, and now she has a Brit Award as well. Please welcome the fabulous Paloma Faith. <laughs> It's been ages since oh, I saw you. Well, Do I go there? Yes, you yeah, go here, yeah, please. Yeah. You take oh. the pole position right there. Thank Paloma. Uh, well, here she is, the best British female solo <laughs> artist at this year's Brits, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations. <laughs> Long overdue, because uh, you've been nominated a couple of times in the past, haven't you, for that award? Yeah, that was my fourth nomination. Wow. And that's me bawling my eyes out. Uh, the previous years, when you didn't, go home with it. Yeah. Did you have speeches ready then? Had you already thought through no, what you were going to say? No, I, I didn't have a speech ready um, that night. I don't think... I think, basically, well, I was at the table and as my category was getting closer, like, people's body language was shifting and around me and, like, my manager just sort of grabbed my hand, who, incidentally, I forgot to thank, like, was the one person I was supposed to thank. But I was in such a frenzy of weirdness that I was like... Ugh. And he sort of just grabbed my hand reassuringly and went, take your time. 
like that. And I was like, <gasps> and then I started frantically writing names of people on a piece of paper. That, so did that he I know then? Is that means he knew you'd won? I think you he knew by that point, yeah, but wow. I, I didn't know. And then I was like writing names and I was like in a panic and I forgot. And you get like really kind of overwhelmed and it becomes a bit of a blur because like, I just had no idea and I've also am a person who just never expects to win anything because I've actually never won anything ever what? including a raffle ne or like <laughs> a ten pound lottery ticket not or even anything. when you were a kid not even when you were little I've never I think I won one um egg painting competition at oh. Easter <laughs> at and, and did, you, did you thank your manager back then or was that <laughs> Uh, the speech I thought was lovely, the speech you made at the Brits, I thought was really, it, it sounded so genuine and it was clearly so emotional. it was. Yeah. And the speaking about, I mean, it was remarkable, talk, you, you spoke about having been in Hackney before and being arrested yeah. for fly posting your own gigs, which I, I never knew that happened to you. That must have been scary at the time, being arrested. Well, for... my mum loves to bring me down the peg, so she took great pride in reminding me after that, you were not arrested, you were cautioned. But I was like, <laughs> oh, all right. But it sounded better to say arrested. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Let me ask you about your mum. You mentioned your mum there. You said she brings mm. down to earth. So, uh, and I know she, you had quite an unusual upbringing, didn't you? Yeah, my mum's, like, unusual. I don't know, like, my mum's very imaginative. She used to, she was quite a sort of, she's an optimist and she's, like, really creative and... I think the, the older I get, the more I'm turning into her. But like, she used to like do stuff like make a little restaurant on on the pavement for me to have dinner, <laughs> and she'd pretend it was a restaurant. Cause she'd like we'd go out to a restaurant tonight, and I'd get so excited, and she'd make one like on the pavement in Hackney, like a little table with a tablecloth, flour, and she'd my mum like was working full time so there wasn't much time to cook so she used to cook me pretty much the same meal every night which was like some pasta with tomato sauce and she'd come out and make it seem so exotic with a tablecloth like over her arm and she'd be like so madam this evening we have the special pasta <laughs> with a fresh tomato sauce <laughs> tinned by the way <laughs> um, but, like, and she'd make it like can i take your order and I, I just thought it was like my whole world was so like as a kid i just was mesmerized by how brilliant life was and literally when i look back it was all kind of from my mum's brilliant imagination that's so lovely though. that but, is so and lovely. i went out i went on holiday with a the day after the Brits, and she really struggles with, like, my mum's a proper kind of people person, like, socialist, and, you know, everything, the most PC person ever. And we walked into the hotel that I booked, which I have to say, I consciously didn't book anything too posh, because I knew my mum would be upset. And she, we opened the door, and she goes... <laughs> I've got to say it now, I'm uncomfortable with your lifestyle and I'm uncomfortable with how relaxed in it you are. <laughs> and I was like, oh. And she was like, that breakfast buffet is out of this world. <laughs> is she the sort of uh, mother who is desperate for you to have your own children so she can be a grandmother yeah. or is she happy that the career, is, and she's focused on the career for you? Um, well, there was one tour that we did where... Um, I found my mum, like, in catering, because we travel with caterers, like, because there's so many people working on it. Um, and she, I, I, after I got off stage one day, I found my mum in, in the catering, eating, like, a, a sort of white bread sandwich, talking to the woman who prepared it, saying, I mean, it's all bloody fair and good, this fame thing, but I haven't got any grandkids. And I was like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> she was like, don't know really. I was like, mum, let's get out. <laughs> so she's keen for that. She's working yeah. on you for that. She's okay. she's just like you've done it now. You've done it now. You can add that to your list. And like before this album came out, I think I've said in a few times, my mum was like, if it doesn't go well, you can rent your spare room out. <laughs> <laughs> well, so that was my gone, plan B. Here's the current album. This is the perfect contradiction. This has been out for a while. And it's been a huge sell, hasn't it? Yeah, it's done quite well. Yeah. Uh, and That's have... the Outsiders edition. So it's got. Excellent Some stuff. new songs. It's got the new single, which is coming out now. Yeah, well, we have a Beauty clip. Remains. This is uh, Beauty Remains for Paloma Faith, and it's lovely.
was beautiful. I'm not that's great. So a lot of your songs, I noticed on that album, a lot of your songs recently have, they've been about breakup, they've been about heartache, mm. they've been about those things, which are great topics for songs, of course. But you're with someone at the moment, you have a man yeah. in your life, so things are pretty good, you don't have that actually going on. I'm really, really, really happy, and I don't have anything to moan about. So I'm trying now to write, I've started my new album, I'm trying to write songs that aren't about love or heartache, which is really challenging. Yeah. But I think there's a lot of more important... Not more, but as important things going on in the world. So if you're not worried about those, because that's what, you know, love songs tend to have that element in there. You yeah. can, I suppose you can write one saying, I'm, I'm just really happy right now, but that isn't, doesn't tend to be as interesting, does it? I don't think so. But no. I, I, when I, I actually worked with Pharrell on this album, and I spoke to him um, before Happy was, like, really big, and he was like, I, I'm just happy, and I just want to sing about being happy. And he did really well at it, didn't yeah. he? <laughs> Loved it. But when you and put I it like, like that, he makes him sound quite annoying, doesn't it? Like, he said, he said oh, people always now. moaning. I was like, oh, I was going in, I was like, I'm a queen of tragedy, I'm dark, I just want to struggle. And he was like, no, I, I just want to be really happy. I'm so happy I'm going to wear a silly hat and get away with it. <laughs> no, I was talking about the Bond movies, and I know you recently put out there how much you love to do a Bond, Bond theme, theme song. Which would be, of course, a great thing. Like, yeah, look, there's me saying, I've been waiting patiently to be able to sing the next theme. I, I've taken so much inspiration. Now, but you see, from that's unusual, because that, I mean, that, this place, that's a bit needy, you put it out there. <laughs> Do you know what I was, I was um, saying the other day? It's like, it's really weird in a sort of celebrity culture that it's like, Everyone's got to sort of pretend that everything's like that. Like yeah. people are shocked at my speech. That I was actually pleased because everyone's sort of got to pretend that it's like, oh great, thanks, yeah, Brit Award. Like, no, I've worked for ages to get that. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Yeah. And it's like, why can't I just go? Well, I'd really like to do this as yeah, well. Yeah. Like, it's all this sort of pretending to be cool. I want everyone to know I'm not cool, and I'm happy <laughs> not to be cool, and I also know that I'm not going to be singing the bomb because I've found out that I'm not going to be singing Ah, uh, well, because I, well, I thought maybe, because I knew that you'd be now doing a, a secret track in L.A., and I thought maybe this was it. No. <laughs> I'm stumped. All right. Um, <laughs> now, I read this, I don't think it's true, that obviously, I know I've seen you perform live, you sang live on the show last season, it was mm. incredible. Um, but you, obviously, when you're doing a video or sometimes when you're doing TV appearances, sometimes people ask you to mind. Well, I know, I only got asked to mind once in my career and they've never asked me again because I just can't do, I can't lip sync. This was the Alan Titchmar show, I believe. Yeah. They kept cutting to my band because my sick lips kept going out of sync with the music. Okay, so you just can't do it. So if I was to play so a bit now and ask you to lip sync, even though it's your own song, you might not be able to do it? I might not be able to. I, I'll, I'll try. Okay, well, let's see where, how good you are. Damien, are you any good at lip syncing? Lip syncing? Yeah. Maybe. Let's see, okay. I okay. don't know. Well, let's see. We've got other woman. Okay, here we go. So let's play. Oh, The thing is, is when you like, because if you write them, you've got creative license. So if I make a mistake, I can just swap them for another line. So if That's you're singing live, like. you can just do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah but yeah. like with that, you've got to be right. And, and when you sort of go, ah, ah, you've got to remember where you did that. And yeah. it's like I can't remember where I did that. So I just can't, I can't do it. <laughs> Damon, which proves sorry. it's always live. Yeah, Damon, we got one for you. Uh, oh, we got with a foreigner track because we figured, a foreigner track. Yeah, yeah, we figured like, let's be age appropriate. Start at the top. And, uh, is he getting the words? This is. I, well, should we give him the words or not? I what? would say so. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is the classic. I want to know what love is. A great Where song. Where we started. Imagine if Damien had been the lead singer of Foreigner. Here we go. Yeah. In my life, oh yes. There's been
Hey, hey Brian. Oh, enjoyed that. Oh, thank you. Tell Brian Ferry he can go home. <laughs> Uh, wow, that was pretty exciting. That was good. Yeah. You are such a ham yeah. when you do that sort of thing. Oh, I, love, I love a bit of karaoke. Uh, Paloma, I'm so pleased you won it. You so deserve it. And it was so lovely to see you get it and, and be Thank so you. excited yeah, here, to receive here. it. And it was a genuinely lovely moment. And I can't wait for the new album, the happy album, as we'll call it. Ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous Paloma Faith. Hey. And thank you so much for coming in tonight. Thank you. Really wonderful. Can you uh, ask me if I'm going to stick around? Yes, I want you to stick around. You going to stick around? No. Yes, you are. I'm off. Me and Josh were talking backstage about how funny it would be because you always say, "Are you going to stick around?" Okay. You always say. Well, I'll ask you again. Are you, you no. going to stick around? No. <laughs> <laughs> Still to come after the break, we have Josh Whitaker and Brian Ferry. We're chatting and performing live, so don't go away. I won't be here. You will be here. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, she did stay with us. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get my next guest out. One of our finest TV comedians. Uh, he's alive at the Apollo and panel show regular. Will you please welcome the very funny Mr. Josh Widdicombe. <laughs> hey, Josh, it's great to have you here. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm hoping we have a lot of your fans here. So this, I, I haven't seen you. I know you're on Get a show. Get under then. Wow. <laughs> God, this isn't the start I hope. secure. Is that, why are you I nervous? don't feel secure. I feel <laughs> abused. <Yeah. laughs> uh, you haven't done that many talk shows as a guest, though, have you? No. You're lucky to have me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, you're, you're, you're keen to do it, I hope. Look, very excited. Good, good, good. Very good. excited. Well, I'm pleased to have you on, because I love watching you on TV and I like your comedy. Thank you very much. I'm, it's a, this has been a dream, Jonathan. Really? <laughs> I, well, I, that sounded sarcastic. It wasn't meant to be. <laughs> I, um, I don't want to say this because it's, it's blowing smoke up your ass. Wow. <laughs> but I, um, I went to Madame Tussauds six years ago. <laughs> Well, already, the fact you said six years ago has made it seem less like Pride Sunday. <laughs> I know they've moved me to Blackpool now. I'm not there anymore. I've heard your candles now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I went to Madame Tussauds and my most exciting moment was I had my photo taken as if I was on the Jonathan Ross show. Oh, yeah, because they had the setup right. Yeah, yeah, so I've brought it for you to see. Well, let's see. This is, oh, so wow. this is a while ago. Where's the Yeah. <laughs> I don't know which of us comes out of that worse. Oh, I think yeah. we... Well, yeah, actually, you know, it looks, think we, yeah, we don't... It looks like that was the period when I was homeless. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like a very butch lesbian interviewing Bilbo Baggins. <laughs> so a lot of people, I think, know you from The Last Egg. I don't know Ooh. how many fans you have there, but I love that show. I think it's a great show on oh, Channel 4. You. You're you... there with, um, with Adam and you're there with Alex, of course. Yeah. How do you describe the show to people who might not have seen it yet? Um, there's two disabled guys and me, <laughs> and uh, we get onto TV because there's quotas. <laughs> 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 no, it started as, a, it started as a show in the Paralympics yeah. uh, where we just talk about the day's sport, and then uh, now it's become about the news. But you're not... No, I'm you not disabled. You do not have a disability. I've, I've got... Um, so how come you snuck in there, then? Because uh, if, if it was... Oh, the... I lied. <laughs> uh, no, I, um, I get mistaken for it. I... I did a gig and the woman said, I said, oh, where's the toilet? And she took me to the disabled toilet. Yeah. <laughs> and I was too, I thought it was too rude to say no. Yeah, yeah. So I went into the disabled toilet and then I came out and there was a disabled woman stood oh, there. Oh, no. And it was the most awkward limp I've ever done in my life. <laughs> um, you are from, your accent is, it's a... Funny. I'm, I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying to place it. It's from the West Country? Is that yeah, what, I'm where? from, I'm from Dartmoor. Okay. From the kind of from the middle of nowhere. Really. Someone sighed in pity then, I think, when you said that. <laughs> Nothing happened. Well, I, I grew up. I had um, four people in my year at school. Wow. wow. Yeah. That's weird. All right. <laughs> that is really. Strange. Yeah, it was. It didn't feel it. Like... Were there lots of people in the year above and the year below, or was it that fairly common? Yeah, there was. There was two hundred in the year above. <laughs> <laughs> Three hundred in the year before. It was just a strange probability. <laughs> <laughs> So what did you do for fun when you grew up? Well, that's the key thing with kids. No, you just, there was no entertainment. The, the, well, you tried to make your own entertainment, but it wasn't very adventurous. So, for instance, when I was about ten, for comic relief, um, we thought me and my best friend Thomas decided thought we'd raise some money. So we decided to walk to the local uh, town, Bovey Tracy, three miles, in Wellington boots full of custard. Nice. 
And we thought it would have been a good, it was a nice thing to do. It's it a been? nice thing for comedy. Yeah, but yeah. Um, the main issue was my mum, when preparing the custard, didn't realise that we'd want it served at a lower temperature. <laughs> <laughs> Can you serve it on an apple crumble? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen your Wellington boots steaming like the entrance to stars in their eyes. No, I haven't. <laughs> Have you ever put your foot... Basically, if you haven't put your foot in a Wellington boot of boiling hot custard, there'll be a couple of you, but you don't need to fess up now. <laughs> With a bath, it, a hot bath, it's like, oh, that's too hot. Yeah. <laughs> With a Wellington boot of boiling hot custard, it's like, oh, that's too hot, and suctioned on. <laughs> It's like kind of medieval torture device by the Chuckle Brothers, isn't it? <laughs> but that was ge genuinely the most fun I ever had in Devon. <laughs> so what's it like there now? Is it now more of a cosmopolitan, uh, no. sophisticated place? No. Uh, you, do you remember the poster shop Athena? Yes. My local town, Exeter, still has one. <laughs> <laughs> They've got an Athena next to a CNA. and a Wow. A C and a Yeah, I know. If you want to dress like a French exchange student, <laughs> that is the place for you to <laughs> I, um, no, my, nothing happens. Like, my mum tries to text me with news, but there's no news. There, I got a text a couple of months ago during the storm saying, Josh, just so you know, the storms are on their way, so I've put the wheelie bin in the shed. That's <laughs> <laughs> what case... I meant to do with this information. Well, in case you were worried, she was... I lived 250 miles worried. away, I couldn't give a shit, <laughs> So you've been, uh, did you start stand-up down there? I guess you couldn't. No, there I started, I started here. You could, no. <laughs> I could have performed to my other three housemates in a bull. Um, <laughs> no, I started in London. I've, um, yeah, it's, I started about six or seven years ago. And you came, you went straight into it full-time, or you had jobs in the daytime oh, and in the evening? I've worked. Um, I, my first job, I, um, this was back in Devon, um, was for the local pub, and I, um, I had to kind of forage for logs for the fire. It sounds yeah. almost medieval where you go. <laughs> um, and so, so you had that was an actual job, but you were paid that was, for that job? Yeah, uh, uh, two pounds fifty an hour. Oh, but it was only ten minutes work, and all the logs were kind of under a. <laughs> <laughs> they were under a kind of <laughs> stone bridge, and so I'd just try and get my hourly rate up by just making it last longer. So I just sit under a bridge. Basically, I was employed as a troll. <laughs> <laughs> but you kind of had that look about you, you know Cheers, what I mean? Mate. No, no. I don't, mean, I don't mean that in a mean way. I mean, well, like what a, other way well, can he mean it? Because, like a Middle Earth kind of fellow. Well, uh, yeah. You I, have a bill by I, look about you, yeah, don't you? Yeah, all right, yeah. I auditioned. <laughs> you actually you got an audition for it. Well, then you see, this proves my theory. Well, not, not, no, no, because I didn't get the role. No. <laughs> but the looks were there. The looks were there. I thought, I. I went full in and I, they said, do you want to audition for The Hobbit? Well, so have you acted much before? Never. Had you studied acting? No. Did you have ambitions as an actor? No. Okay. <laughs> but I thought I looked like one. Yeah. <laughs> and I went for the main role. Yeah. <laughs> That's confidence. <laughs> That's confidence. And I was shit. Okay. <laughs> Did they give you, I guess they give you part of the script to read? They did, yeah, I had that. And I don't like that kind of thing. I think it's like, you know. You mean acting? You went... No, no, like The Hobbit or like... Um... But you don't like fantasy? No, it's absurd. But you went to the audition. <laughs> I live in the real world. Yeah. <laughs> why would I want to do that? Yeah, why would you, with your past, living under a bridge, be interested <laughs> in reading about spectacular... That's the real world! <laughs> so how did the audition go, then? How was the I acting? I was terrible. They said, um... I delivered it, and then they said, could you do it with more light and shade? <laughs> Well, let me Which start... basically means, could you act? Yeah. <laughs> Have that... you ever had, could you do it with more light and shade? Light, light and shade, yes. Yes, I've had, I've had that a couple of times. What's the worst time you've had? Do it slower. Can you do it slower? Can you do it with more light and shade? Are we talking about your can you do it, your can you do it with highlights? <laughs> <laughs> We're not talking about your honeymoon night. Attention, <laughs> Have you ever had, uh, would you mind doing it in another was... room? You never, you never. <laughs> <laughs> I have an extract of. Uh, Bill oh, do you? speech in Hobbit, because they told me that you had... They told me I thought you still wanted to do it. I didn't know that you, this was No, I do, because uh, the money must be amazing. Yeah, would, would you... Let's see, have you learned the light and shade? Can you act now, do you think? I've... Yeah, I reckon I could give it a go. Okay, so I'm Bilbo Baggins. Yeah. Is he a Hobbit? He's the Hobbit. He's the Hobbit? He's the, the big Hobbit. one? He's the okay. lead Hobbit. Right. <laughs> so this was from the last Hobbit film. OK. Uh, this is when... Uh, well, no spoilers, but this is when Brody dies. So, OK. <laughs> What? <laughs> I covered my ears earlier. <laughs> Doesn't really. 
<laughs> I did not come to steal from you. <laughs> Hang on. That's oh, about as bad as it could be. At... Why are you... He now works at Carphone Warehouse. Yeah, why is your voice... <laughs> why did your voice go... Your voice went sort of silly. I was acting! No, but your voice went silly then. It went oh, do you want me to do it? No, no, do it like the character. You I've know. never seen the film! <laughs> OK, well, use your imagination. He's... Oh, yeah, it was! OK, but you... No, look, you, you, he's talking to Smaug. Smaug is an all-powerful uh, dragon who's oh, got a cave... absurd! No, I'm an all-powerful dragon. You're speaking to me. I'm a dragon. I'm scary, I'm fearsome, uh, you've got nothing to uh, win and everything to lose, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I did not come to steal from you, O oh, Smaug, the unassailably wealthy. <laughs> Apt, isn't it? Yeah. Um... <laughs> I merely wanted to gaze upon your magnificence. Not so apt. <laughs> to see if you're as great as the old tales say. I did not believe them. That's terrible. You're a terrible actor. <laughs> 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 You've got the part. You've got it. Oh, let's see hear Damien doing. You've got it. That's... Can, you, can you teach me how to do a Devon accent? I can't do accents. I can't do any of them. But that's your accent. Yeah, that's the right. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't learn it. It just happens. <laughs> I didn't learn it. That's I'm not just what I said! <laughs> Okay, okay let's see Damien do it. I'm, do you want me to be smart? I'm to steal from you. Oh, oh I can do that. How, how good is that as Devon? I want to do Devon. Well, what, all of it. Just... <laughs> You've had oh, your Paloma. Yeah. I'm terrible at acting. Yeah, see, every minute ago, everyone was laughing at Josh, now people don't want to do it. No. Okay, I'll do it. Okay. I did not come to steal from you. <laughs> Snog the unassailable. Yes. 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 That was right and shade and everything in between. Right and shade. That's the way you do it. It's the most terrifying thing I've ever seen. That was, <laughs> that was funny. Uh, so now you're not touring at the moment, but you're going to tour again touring soon, I imagine. Touring in September. Josh, it's lovely you came on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you I'm, for having me. I'm pleased that I got to have you here, and you finally got to fulfil that weird fantasy of yours. Oh yeah, th okay. no, thank you. Good to have you, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Josh Whittacombe. Yeah. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. 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 Josh Whitaker, after the Brian Ferry, will be chatting and singing for his life, so don't go away. <laughs> Before we get my next guest out, let me just take a moment here to remind you a few of the fantastic hits that made him one of the biggest music stars of recent times. Look at Brian Ferry in action. Make me a deal and make it straight. Oh, Simon Seal, I take you. I didn't mean to hurt you. I'm just a jealous guy. Come on, come on. It's going to have to be about that eye patch, for sure. We want to know you, Mr. Brian Ferry, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Right, I've got to ask you about that eye patch there. Was that, uh, that was, I get, was that Top of the Pops or one of those performances? That's something like that, yeah. It was, uh, it was genuine, though. I uh, can't remember what happened. I think I had an argument with a door or something. I, I admire you for styling it out, though. But, see, you would have got away with the eye patch. Because uh, didn't you sometimes wear an eye patch anyway? No, no, that was, that was the first one, one and only time. I'm mixing think. you up with a pirate, I know, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you kind of... Obviously, you don't dress like that anymore. You wouldn't dress like some of the crazier earlier outfits. And you don't... Not do you really. ever wear makeup anymore on stage? Uh, not really, no, no, no. Just when I'm on your show. A little bit of blusher? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. And where are the outfits? So, because I, I grew up loving Roxy Music and I love the style as much. Do you have them in storage somewhere? I think have still got them in storage, yeah, yeah. Were the kids Most... allowed to wear them ever? Um, they steal them occasionally for <laughs> fancy dress parties. Like <laughs> there you go. See, that's what a band should look like. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I mentioned you some very brief in passing there. This was uh, shocking news I heard about, uh, was it Merlin, your son Merlin, Merlin yeah, yeah. who was involved in what sounded like a terrifying car accident. And he is, how old is Merlin? He's 24. 24. Um, and that's kind of the call no parent wants to get a call. No, it's pretty bad. It's the worst thing a parent could imagine, really. Um, 
and uh, he was in this head-on collision. And um, thanks to the uh, first the fireman in Shropshire and and the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Uh, doctors and nurses, he, he's making an amazing recovery. And, uh, well, that's the, thanks to the NHS, that's basically. Great news. Did you see, have you seen the picture? I saw the picture of the cars. Yeah, I did see it. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to show you a picture, and you see this, you'll just realise the severity of this crash. And no one was harmed, I believe. Uh, you know, they were harmed, but no one was fatally injured. No, no. Okay, which mm. is, so we should say that before we do. But look at this, this is a shocking photograph. Mm. That's quite something, isn't it? Man. But he is fine now. It was in the danger zone for a while, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, very much so. And, um... Now he's actually out of hospital for a bit. He has to go back for more operations. And, but he can, he can walk or he's taking steps again now? Yeah, yeah, he's with a crutch and uh, yeah, he's, being, he's being very game about it, yeah. Okay. Uh, and, uh, so who, who brought the news to you? Who phoned you when that happened? Um, his brother Otis. Oh. Yeah. And uh, so uh, I, I can't On imagine... On the 22nd of December, so it was kind of... It was that time of the year when you want to kind of celebrate and... Uh, so it was a pretty dark time for us. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. But thank heavens it's going oh. in the right direction. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Wow, that's quite something. Your, yeah. I, I was thinking about your sons, and I was thinking about your life and your upbringing and how different that must have been. Because you, you came from a very working-class family. Yeah. In, uh, you were Geordie, aren't you? Kind of, yeah. Yeah, I'm from uh, Durham. That's the time yeah. where... Sort of so different. Newcastle was my, big, my kind of biggest city, though, where I actually went to... I went to university there. Your dad was a miner, wasn't he? Yeah, well, he, he was born on a farm, and he was, um, he was actually a farm labourer, really. He was he, um, very proud of his, um, all the prizes he had for ploughing with a team of four horses. And, uh, so he, he, he worked with horses all his life. Um, in the 30s, he went down the pit wow. to work with the horses there. You so, can, I can imagine. So he was basically like a country guy. But working underground. So what did your father, who is, you know, a very, uh, you know, a traditional sort of farm man who then has this kind of, like, tough what did he make of his son deciding to go off to art school uh, and then yeah. dressing like that? that he must was have been... amazed. I think, uh, first of all, you know, he couldn't understand the art thing. Um, but then um, he accepted it and they were very supportive, actually. I also actually loved what I was doing. I loved painting. And uh, I really wanted to to be an artist and live in New York or somewhere and yeah. uh, be a Jackson Pollock or whoever. And I, I kind of went to Newcastle University. We had this great artist there called Richard Hamilton, yeah. who uh, was like the leading English pop artist. Sorry. And uh, that was a great time for me. That's where I met a lot of uh, people who are still my friends. Now, and you artists. met some of the huge names that you met. Andy Warhol, I believe, and also Salvador Dali. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. we have a picture of you with Salvador Dali, which uh. is... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of... I'm not that sure whether you're fine. with him or he's just lurking behind you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you spoke with Dali? Oh, yeah. And on another night, we went for dinner with him, and uh, it was amazing, because he had, like, six incredible, beautiful blondes in this great black Cadillac limousine in Paris. And he, he lived in the Maurice Hotel, which is a fantastic old hotel. Um, at that time, it was beautiful. And, uh, yeah, we went for dinner. My mandolier was a, was a friend yeah. we had in common. Did, Another uh, beautiful blonde. Did he actually have a pet anteater? Or was... Because I've seen a photograph of him walking his pet anteater in Not Paris. In there the he is. in Paris, but... Taking it for a walk. Well, he was, he was a strange one. And, uh, I think saying he's a strange yeah. one is an understatement, yeah. yeah. But what a, what a brilliant thing. What did you talk to him about? I can't remember much. I mean, How can you not remember what you spoke to Salvador Dali about? I was more interested in talking to the girls who were with him. <laughs> <laughs> so how old were you then when you met Dali? Um, I was 28, wasn't I? 28, yeah. yeah. So a young man still. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, you're going to perform a track for the new album now. And I love the fact the album, I mean, it's a great-looking album. The album's called Avermore, and I notice you've gone for an old photograph of yeah, yourself there. Yeah, I, I think so. Now, so what's the deal there? How are you getting away with that, Brian? Well, I'll tell you why, because we were in a real rush to get it out. <laughs> this was before Christmas, and um, I was in Chicago. So we went into the archive and found this early study. Because that's the image I use of myself on Tinder. Ah. So, uh, <laughs> 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 you ever looked on Tinder? No, no. You know what Tinder is? Nope. You don't know what Tinder is? No. Nor do I. Josh, what's Tinder? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, so Brian's going to perform for us now, ladies and gentlemen. The album is called Avermore. The track that we're going to have this evening is... You're going to do Drive Me Wild, is that yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, Brilliant. Brian, it's lovely to see you again. And I'm, oh, uh, thank you. Uh, and once again, you know, uh, I'm so pleased that 
your son as well, because that must have been Thanks the worst much. news you could have, you would have heard. Ladies and gentlemen, he'll be performing for us right now, but join me now in saying thank you to Mr. Brian Ferry. Thank you. Brian, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I think, Brian, you go over. Brian's going to go and get ready to perform. Thanks to all my guests tonight. Of course, next week my show will be a special one-off exclusive interview with Madonna in which we talk about her career, her personal life and, of course, that fall of the Brits. Plus, she'll be performing two brilliant new songs for us as well. So don't miss it. That's next Saturday. But now we have a musical treat for you as well. This evening, here with Driving Me Wild, it is, of course, Mr Brian Ferry. <laughs> As Jonathan said, the one and only Madonna joins him next Saturday night at 20 past nine. Over night be two tonight, there's some healthy competition for the lads in Ibiza Weekender and on ITV4. Taking a look at all the action from Eden Park with the ICC Cricket World Cup highlights next. Stay with us for the late news.